Here come the Longhorns from DKR Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Welcoming in TCU for the Big 12 opener. And we welcome you to Fox College Football, sponsored by the all new Totally Remix Volkswagen Jetta. Welcome inside Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman joins us in a moment. Huge win in front of a record crowd here last week for Texas over USC. And so they're all fired up, rightfully so. But now they got TCU coming to town for the conference opener, and they have not been able to figure the Horn Frogs out. The biggest question everyone wants to know if you're a Texas Longhorns fan is, is Texas back? Well, today's game will go a long way in proving that, but they should feel optimistic about this matchup. This defense has been able to replicate what it did a year ago. Great on third down, great in stopping the run, and the offense has improved week after week. But this is a tough TCU defense, tough yeah. team. Yeah, as they showed against Ohio State last week, right? They had them, they let them off of the hook. But if you ask Gary Patterson, if he had to choose between beating Ohio State or beating Texas, he'd choose to beat Texas. I think he knows if they win the Big 12 championship there's a chance that they could very well play Ohio State again if they do their part in the college football playoff they're that talented on a national stage they showed off the high powered offense and that stingy defense what's been the reason I mean it's four consecutive wins for TCU five of the six since they joined the conference against Texas let's go back to a year ago when you check out that Texas TCU game seven sacks 12 tackles for loss I mean it's all about the pressure that Gary Patterson and his defense puts on you offensively they're great early and down and they force you in third and long situations where all of a sudden he's got a blitz package for you and he's going to hammer away and force turnovers and force mistakes. That's what Gary Patterson's known for. Should be a lot of fun today from Austin, Texas. We'll take it a break with our progressive insurance pre-kick flow as the Horn Frogs and Longhorns meet up. We're glad you're with us. Opening kick coming up. Welcome back to Fox College Football, sponsored by the all-new Tour de the Remix Volkswagen Jetta. Before opening kickoff, down to the field, Bruce Feldman. Joe, Tom Herman said, after that big win over USC, I pleaded with my team on Sunday, do not read your mentions. That has been an issue here before. There have been too many highs, and the lows are too low, and that has been the downfall of this program. But listening is a choice, and I get the sense that this team gets it. Fifth year senior Chris Nelson told us we didn't know how to take winning before. That's something this new staff has taught us, though. All right, Bruce, Texas won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Cavante Turpin and the Horn Frogs will get it to start this Big 12 opener. Cameron Dicker sends it away, and off we go from Austin. Turpin will have his shot, bringing it back from the goal line. Cavante Turpin slips his way across the 25, and that's where TCU will begin its first possession of the day with a sophomore quarterback, Sean Robinson. It's one of the top recruits they've ever had at TCU, and in his first year as the starter. Coming off some career highs last week on a national stage versus Ohio State, career high in completions, total yards, passing yards, so he's got to feel confident coming into this week's matchup. Thing that kind of makes him special, though, is, is he's a du true dual threat quarterback. He's dynamic running the football, and he's resilient. When they struggled a little bit last week, he responded, came back with some big time plays. A 40 to 28 loss against the Buckeyes, where they led late in the third quarter before Ohio State ripped off 20 points in a row. There's a whistle before the ball was snapped, and a timeout for TCU. Prior to the snap, TCU called their first timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. You hate to have that. I mean, you should be ready. Beginning of the game, you script your openers. You should always have those 10 or 15 plays ready to go. If you're Sonny Cumbie, the offensive coordinator, head coach Gary Patterson, you got to be beside yourself a little bit, wasting a timeout this so early on the road. Now, there's a chance for rain all week. We're not going to have the rain, but pretty windy today. The wind was the biggest concern and being down on field on the field before the game it felt like it was swirling and I think you noticed the pump returners having the biggest issue with it but sometimes the quarterbacks too trying to drive the ball to the sidelines were having a little bit of an issue of the wind not knocking it down. Now 
ready for the first play. Out of the gun on first and ten. They fake it and dump it off to Shewo Olana Lua. One of the many playmakers on this TCU offense that a week ago, Brady, put up more yards against Ohio State than any team had over the last four years. And it's because TCU has so many weapons. You look at the pace of play, they're already lined up, ready to go again, but it's all the speed and all the different skill players they try to get the ball to. Second down and five. Robinson goes outside to one of those dynamic playmakers and Jalen Rager has a first down to the 45. And that's a matchup to keep your eye on number one Jalen Rager for TCU going up against Chris Boyd for Texas. Her high seven catches a week ago has his first one today. They get it in the hands of Turpin. Got a block from Jarrison Stewart to get nine. Vintage TCU offense. This is how they move the ball. They get the ball to the outside where they have speed and they force you to make tackles in space. Another fake and another throw. It's Rager for a first down. Quickly to the 36 yard line where Caden Stearns makes the tackle. If you're offensive coordinator Sonny Cumbie, what you've done is you've given your quarterback Sean Robinson some easy passes, easy completions on the road, giving him confidence and getting him into a rhythm. Four plays, four completions for Robinson. And we'll swing this one to the freshman, Tay Barber. Now Barber with a solid first down pickup. Gary Johnson with his first tackle. There to be second and six. Johnson, a part of this Texas defense, been really good behind Todd Orlando. As Barber gets in for a couple of yards. You know, big time strides in the two seasons that Orlando's been the D coordinator. And this is the down that he really excels at. Typically, he's got a blitz package. He likes to mix up the fronts, give you some different looks. But they've excelled getting off the field on third down. And as teams creep down in the red zone, they've also been very stingy, allowing touchdowns. Third down and three. Olana Lua not going to get there. Hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped by the Big 12 Player of the Week, Gary Johnson, setting up an early fourth and short. You almost wondered if Gary Patterson, because of some of the kicking issues they've had with Cole Bunce, would think about going for it. And with that win, too, you don't know how it's going to affect this kick, but. And those kicking issues you mentioned with Cole Bunce has led him to change his kicker to Jonathan Song. First attempt of the season for the junior. Not an easy one. This would be a career long. It is right down the middle to open the scoring. Jonathan Song with a career high 46 yarder and Texas's offense takes the field for the first time today after this. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by American Express. Don't live life without it. And by Go RVing. Find your own way. Go RVing. 89th meeting between these programs, and lately TCU has dominated it. 153 to 33, the combined score over the last four games, all TCU wins. In fact, Texas hasn't held a single lead over the last four years between these teams. I haven't scored over 10 points. I mean, it's just been true domination by Gary Patterson and TCU. Deshaun Jamison back to return this Cole Bunts kick. The opening kickoff last week, part of a litany of mistakes on special teams for the Horned Frogs, went out of bounds. This one through the back of the end zone. And a touchback. So Texas will start at the 25-yard line with a sophomore from right here in Austin, Sam Allinger. Started six games a year ago going back and forth with Shane Bouchel, but then won the job outright in camp this year. Yeah, I think I think I've noticed about him in the past couple weeks is he's improved his decision making. He's not making those poor decisions. He's either taking off and running or throwing the football away. And he's an opportunistic runner. If there's a crease or a seam there, he's going to take off and pick up the additional yards. 
Coming off their most impressive game yet in the 37 17 win against USC. They open this one with a straight ahead run for Trey Watson. They're hoping though for a better start. It's been a theme all season getting off to slow starts. It's the biggest thing to to carry over some of the confidence from that win versus USC a week ago is a fast start. Yeah, they're down 14-3 in that game before scoring the final 34 points. Ellinger wants one on one. He's got a man. He drops it into Colin Johnson. Inside the 30. 45 yards over the top of Ridwan Isahaku. Well, and that's the matchup you're going to take every time. Isahaku, a safety out on Colin Johnson, the big six foot six, big time playmaker, wide receiver for Texas. From the 25 with a first down and 10. Ellinger looks to throw again under pressure. Has to throw it away. Talked about it off of the top. TCU sacked Shane Bouchelle last year seven times in that blowout win in Fort Worth. I think the, the biggest thing when you look at Gary Patterson, what he likes to do is he's always going to add a little wrinkle, a pressure look. Maybe it's a coverage to try to confuse opposing quarterbacks. Always one of the best defenses in the Big 12. They've held every opponent over the last two years below their scoring average, including Ohio State last week. On second and ten, here's an option play. Ellinger contacted in the backfield and driven down by Corey Bethley. And it's third and long. I'm going back to the conversation about Gary Patterson. You know, he really hones in on your tendencies. I mean, one thing watching Texas on film was watch the alignment of the running backs. Sometimes they set back a little bit deeper, not so much in the pistol behind the quarterback, but offset. When they're right next to him, standing even, typically a pass play. If they're back a yard and a half or more, typically a run play. Third down and 12, predictable as it is. This is where Ellinger really excelled last week. Third down opportunities. Time to scan the field. Comes underneath, and Jeff Gladney promptly bangs down Trey Watson. It's fourth down of the 25. You talk about pre then defense. What does that mean? Only a three man rush. TCU only rushed two that time. I mean, that's how much they're keyed in on kind of, of what Sam Ellinger likes to do. Typically on third and long like that, he's taken off the past couple weeks and picked up additional yards. They had two spies out there waiting for him. Here's your guy, Brady. Oh, Dicker the kicker. The man. He's been solid. Three for three against the Trojans last week. Throughout the first two weeks of his college career without an attempt. This one hooks wide. Well, TCU hits a 46 yarder on its first drive, but Dicker with his first miss is a Longhorn. Time now for home field advantage delivered by Pizza Hut, the official pizza of college football. No one out pizzas the hut. New thing this year, San Jacinto Boulevard becomes Bevo Boulevard on game days. Five hours prior to kickoff opens up. Big party to welcome in the Longhorns. Head coach Tom Herman trying to build off of that win against the Trojans last week and trying to start Big 12 play 1 0. After the missed field goal, TCU takes over at the 25 yard line. And the first carry for Darius Anderson is blown up by Gary Johnson, who's off to another good start after a huge game last week. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last week with that performance versus USC. And he's really stepped in the shoes of Malik Jefferson, moved on to the NFL, and he's done a heck of a job. Robinson snaps it quickly off his back foot, drops it in, but Jerison Stewart can't pull it in. With the coverage from P.J. Locke, and boy, they go so fast, you blink, and it's third down. And this is not the down and distance that TCU wants to live in. And they've got a couple dynamic running backs. Shea Wulana Lua typically comes in on passing situations. And if you're looking for a guy that they like to go to, it's typically Jalen Rager, number one. Problem is he's matched up versus Texas best corner, Chris Boyd. That's a great matchup to the bottom of the screen. Two of the best in the conference. On third down and 11, Robinson facing pressure. He throws a strike, but it's dropped by Turpin. Hit Turpin in the hands, and then Turpin got hit by Davis. Fourth down. Well-thrown football on time, right where it needed to be, working on the inside of Davis. 
Turpin's got to come down with this football. There really is no excuse there. These are the types of big plays that when you go through the history of this matchup, TCU's come up with these big plays. I mean, Turpin burst on the scene back in 2015 with four touchdown catches. Yeah. Andrew David will handle the punting this week and just barely gets it off. That's not performance related. Adam Nunez out with an injury. That is first punt at TCU's out of bounds at the 34 and a 3 nothing game in Austin. Sam Ellinger on the Longhorn offense back to the field after this. Here's our look of confidence brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. And you don't blame him having beaten Texas four times in a row, but confidence oozing out of Gary Patterson when we visited with him yesterday. He really felt like he had a good key in on the tendencies for this Texas offense. Work out of a pistol trying to eliminate some of those tendencies here on first down. And I'll bring Watson near his side. For a first down run. And the Cal transfer of Trey Watson for a gain of one with a stop from Alec Dunham and Juwan Johnson. Second and nine. We're back to the last drive. Colin Johnson with a big catch. Really two guys in the passing games. Little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Johnson as we see Keontae Ingram coming into the game. Which is a noteworthy thing. True freshman that they have big hopes for. Missed last week with a knee injury and was a game time decision today. Ingram just adds more of a dynamic element. Now watching him in warm-ups, it didn't look like he was 100% healthy. We'll see what he's got here. Over Under Armour All-American out of Carthage, Texas. He's in there to block here. That's a perfect throw to Devin Duvernay, a guy they'd really like to get going. Crosses midfield and a gain of 17. With just a seventh catch of the season thus far. As you're looking at Sam Ellinger, working through his progressions, working across the field. That's some of the improvements that we saw since week one. First down and 10 from the 47. Here is Ingram shifting his way for a pickup of four. Carthage, Texas, back to back 2,000 yard seasons there. One of the most explosive of the running backs, like you said, when he's healthy. Time will tell how much of that explosiveness he's got today. Giving him a couple chances early. Not a whole lot of room. Garrett Wallow is first tackle, third down. And if you're Texas, you've got to win this battle of running in between the tackles. If you look at TCU's defense, this vaunted 4-2-5 everyone talks about, they've got speed and they're able to really set an edge to the outside. You're not going to be able to beat them with speed usually. So that's why you've got to be able to push this TCU defensive front off the line if you want to have some success. Third down and four. Ellinger trying to throw for it against just a three man rush. He overshoots Humphrey, who was open with the coverage from Mariko Evans. Evans had stumbled. Ellinger just misfired. Fourth and four. Well, here's the matchup right here. They're working on Mariko Evans. That's a linebacker. You'll take that once a week, twice on Saturdays. And this is just a poorly thrown ball. Maybe a little push off there by Jordan Humphrey. Fourth down and four. Ellinger steps into a back shoulder throw for a first down to Johnson. Colin Johnson against Jeff Gladden. Second catch of the day keeps the drive going. The ball was thrown behind, but because Colin Johnson's got that six foot six frame, he's able to use his body to corral the football, secure the catch, and get the first down. So really hoping he can pick up his level of play and play at a consistently high level. That consistency, physicality, two words that always pop up with him. Two early catches in this game. And now on a first down from the 33. Ellinger gets rid of it just in time. And Ingram gets popped by Ennis Gaines. Leading tackler for the Horn Frogs. Really exploded against Ohio State last week. He's the guy that stood out. I mean, they put him in the box. He's an undersized player, but he tackles so well in space. When they ask him to cover, he gets the job done. That's what I was talking about before this 4-2-5 defense. It's hard to get to the outside against these guys. 
Ellinger steps into a collapsing pocket, delivers a strike for Johnson again. Colin Johnson has his third catch of the day and a first down and a gain of 18. And where Johnson really excels for a big body target, he gets out of his break and he comes back to the football. And sometimes that's the greatest way of creating separation from a cornerback is just coming back to the football and that helps you get yards after the catch. On first down, Humphrey in motion. Ellinger making a call at the line. In the light box, they'll run it with Ingram. Getting a nice surge off the left side for a gain of seven. And this is that area of the field, too, where all of a sudden Sam Ellinger becomes part of that running game. You know, they, they can utilize the zone reads to kind of gain an extra running gap. The defense has to respect because of his athleticism, but also they've got the big body targets on the outside. Colin Johnson, number nine as well as Lord Jordan Humphrey. Got them both into the short side of the field. Now Humphrey in motion. And on second and three. They rule Ellinger. Now he sets his feet underneath Andrew Beck. Tackled at the five. First down and goal with a touchdown saving tackle from Vernon Scott. Nice play designed by Tom Herman and his staff trying to sneak back into the flat. TCU was on top of it though. Watson. There to be second down. Rico Evans in there on the tackle. Texas has not been particularly good in the red zone this season. In fact, it's in the bottom 10 in the country, We're converting these trips into points. We talked about it off of the top. Slow starts in all three games. Missed a field goal on their first drive. Now they've got it second and goal. Now the 11th play of this drive. Back to the ground for Watson. He's in for the Texas touchdown. And for the first time in five years, Texas leads TCU. We talked about starting fast for Texas, especially in this matchup, or just for this season. Missed a field goal in the first drive, come back down and capitalize in the second drive. Cameron Dicker adds the extra point. Texas have a 7 3 lead. Good response by the Longhorns after the missed field goal. And TCU back on offense after this. Fox College Football is sponsored by Chevy. Chevy has received J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs. And by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Boy, it's been a great atmosphere in here so far. After a record crowd of more than 103,000 last week. Expecting more than 100,000 again. And Texas has its first lead of the day on a Trey Watson three-yard touchdown. Andrus Turpin back to return this kick. That's out of bounds. And good field position for TCU. A free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, and it's first down. Time for our first game break of the afternoon. Here's Greg Wolf. Joe, thanks elsewhere in the Big 12 Conference opener. For 12 points, West Virginia and K-State, six seconds before the half. Mountaineers go for the jugular. Heisman hopeful, Will Greer to David Sills. Greer's third touchdown pass of the day. Mountaineers lead 21 to nothing at the half. Joe, Brady, back to you. That's, that's all David Sills does. He just catches touchdown passes. <laughs> Led the country last year off to a good start this year so far. After the kickoff out of bounds, Robinson carries this one. 
accelerates to the hole for a gain of seven and we check in with Bruce Feldman Joe after that last series where TCU's receivers dropped some passes Sean Robinson came over to the bench went over to pretty much each skill guy with a big calming smile on his face and said guys let's just get some first downs do what we do we're fine don't worry about this just let's do what we do and I think the message seemed to be resonated that this kid's the leader of the show right now he carries it on first down there's an injured player for Texas it's their highly touted freshman Caden Stearns Already playing without Malcolm Roach today. Can't afford to lose too many of these talented playmakers. Obviously a true freshman early enrollee that kind of bursts on the scene. They play, say he plays wise beyond his years. And Malcolm Roach, very versatile player for this Texas defense. With Roach out, it's that man there, Jeffrey McCulloch, making his first career start. On second and three, Olana Lua has a first down. Shewo Olana Lua, career high 14 carries against Ohio State last week, and it's 6'3, 230, carries quite a load. He's every bit of 6'3, 230. This isn't one of those listings in their program where he's not that size. He's big. Facing pressure out of the secondary, beating it over the top with Rager. First down and goal for the Horn Frogs on a 50 yard gain. And this was a double move, and it's set up by design. Watch as he a little stutter, and a little slant and go. And it gets Chris Boyd. He's an overly aggressive cornerback. You better believe Sonny Cumbie and his staff had this dialed up, and we're just waiting for the right opportunity. Big play machine, this offense, over the first three weeks. And a big one sets him at the doorstep. Down 7-3, late first quarter. Two rushing TDs for Sean Robinson have both come in the red zone. He's a part of this TCU running game. Alana Lua, Anthony Wheeler, there along with Johnson. Gerald Wilbon as well. Second and goal. It's an offensive line for TCU that saw four players go to the NFL level. They've actually been rotating some guys in today. Trey Elliott right now playing left guard. Cordell Iwagwu went off the field in the last series. Gary Patterson reassured us that even though we rotate guys in, they've, they've all got experience. We all feel confident in their ability to execute. They've been a pleasant surprise with all those NFL departures. Trying to lead the way for Robinson, who won't get away from McCullough. He lost a bunch. And the junior out of Houston making his first start puts his first stamp on this one. Well, it starts off with Austin Myers. He gets beat, and once he gets beat, now the Texas defense is able to set an edge. McCulloch is there. Looks like there's a chance he grabbed Robinson's face mask on the way down. So far, McCulloch stepping up into the shoes of Malcolm Roach. If there's a matchup that I'm looking at, it's going to be Jalen Rager working on Chris Boyd one on one. At the bottom of the field by themselves. The uh, whistle came before the snap. This is blown dead. For a TCU timeout. Already their first Prior to the snap. This first Texas half. calls his first time out of the half. It was actually Texas that took that time out, uh, specifically Todd Orlando, who apparently can fly. <laughs> he was running a 4-4-4. He running down there to get that time out in. Clearly didn't like to, didn't like what he saw from the initial alignment by TCU's offense. As I said before, Jalen Rager's kind of been the go-to guy in this area of the field. Well, they had it first and goal inside the five, but with a negative play, third and goal from the 11. And a similar matchup to the bottom, but an extra DB over the top. And a false start. A false start by number 56 of the offense. The five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. And that's Austin, Austin Myers. We talked about him a moment ago not being able to you know contain McCulloch but he's been rotating in with Anthony McKinney at that left tackle spot you got to wonder having to rotate like that if it messes up your chemistry a little bit as an offensive line well I tell you what I know in, in recent years this place has gotten the reputation for not being the toughest place to play not being the most difficult atmosphere on road teams 
They're doing their best to shed that reputation. It is rocking in here. Well, at this point, too, I mean, there's a couple ways of looking at it. Correction. Offside, number 44 Whoa. in the defense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still third down. And that's Brecken Hager. He's lined up right here. So you can see why maybe Austin Myers was a little bit jumpy. Guy's got a little extra step on him. Tough to tell from there. Well, that changes things quite a bit. Third and goal from the six instead. Robinson floating it for Rager, who's got all kinds of room, but a recovery from Boyd to knock it away. And this is a missed opportunity, just a poorly thrown football. Rager had a step. All you've got to do is put it to that back pylon, and Rager runs to it. But credit Chris Boyd. Look how he's looking to get right in between his hands at the last second. If you get beat, that's what you're taught as a cornerback. You get back to the wide receiver's hip, and you get that hand up in between to disrupt the completion. Big-time play by a big-time cornerback. And on the second attempt for Jonathan Song, who is good from 46 his first time. Half the distance. Same result. Todd Orlando's defense was backed into the goal line there with a first and goal, but they forced the field goal and keep the lead. Great slate of NFL action coming up tomorrow. 49ers trying to slow Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs off to that 2 0 start. And then on America's Game of the Week, it's the Cowboys and the 0 and 2. Seahawks. I don't know how many people saw that coming. That Legion of Boom is really no, no longer there. Earl Thomas is the only remain, remaining player. They got the work cut out for him with the Dallas Cowboys team that's pretty excited about one and one and still in contention in the NFC East. This early at least. Talking about that wind earlier. Blows the ball off to the tee. Bunts will reset it. Jamison waits back. And a short kick taken to the 10. Return to the 20 by Kyle Porter. That's where Texas will begin after this game break with Greg Wolf. Joe, thanks. We'll go to Tuscaloosa. Nick Saban 12 0 all time against his former assistants. Two at Tagovailoa. Finds Hale Hench, a six yard touchdown, four total touchdowns for Tagovailoa. Saban in the tied lead. Jimbo Fisher in Texas AM 28 13 late second quarter. Joe Brady, back to you. As Tonga by Lothan and incompletion on third down, he was perfect through this portion of the season. Just unbelievable. Early Heisman case for him. Texas starts at the 21 yard line. Ellinger hands it off to Trey Watson. A stop from Rico Evans. Going back to the kickoff, TCU kind of had like a pooch kick. And, and there's a new rule now where you can fair catch inside the 20 and get the ball to 25. Would have thought Kyle Porter would have maybe done that. By the way, Brady, Bruce Feldman letting us know that Keontae Ingram has walked under his own power back into the locker room. It was questionable coming into this game, having missed last week with a knee injury. So for now, it'll be just Watson and Daniel Young at running back. On second down, Ellinger to the short side. Colin Johnson's been his favorite target so far. He's got it off for a first down on his fourth catch already. And rightfully so. I mean, again, this young man has all the ability in the world. It's about just consistency, practice habits, all those sorts of things. And maybe this is an opportunity for a breakout game. Not a grade of 10 so far. Pulls it and gets three. Brady, you were, you were pointing out before the ball was snapped. Here comes a run. And if you know that that's coming, you know Gary Patterson knows it's coming. The tough part, though, is who's going to get the football. You know it's a run because of how far back Trey Watson sets. He wants to try to get his shoulders square to the line of, line of scrimmage and get downhill, but you still have to account for Ellinger as well. So that's the difficulty of it. Even, the, even though you know it's coming, you still got to be able to stop it. 
through the quarter. Fun start here in the Big 12 opener. 89th meeting between Texas and TCU. On to the second in Austin. Back on Fox College Football, sponsored by the all-new Totally Remix Volkswagen Jetta. Ready for the second quarter here in Austin with Bevo looking on. Debuted in 2016 and I guess it's been bulking season since. Well, look at that horn span. Yeah. Really growing. Good for that guy. Good for Bevo. That's impressive. Uh-huh. Second down six for Texas. They lead at 7-6 as the second quarter begins. Looking for their first win against TCU in five years. Off play action. Ellinger has pressure in his face. Still able to get rid of it. No flag. Julius Lewis with the coverage on Colin Johnson. Third and six. And this is what TCU is able to do. Get pressure on you. Watch Wallow redirect. It's one of the things you come to appreciate about these linebackers for TCU. How athletic they are. Third down. Colin Johnson's been the guy so far. Where's Lord? A little Jordan Humphrey. When's he going to show up? He's sitting right here. I know what you meant. Slot near side. Humphrey and Johnson both to the near side of the screen. On third and six against just a four man rush. It still gets home. Ellinger takes off and will not get it. Here at Wallow with a tackle. And the punt team coming out. It was all started by Ben Banigou. Second in the Big 12 last year in sacks. Had a quiet start to this season, but I think it's because he's on the map now. Former Louisiana Monroe transfer. It's a force to be reckoned with. I think he's got a really bright future. Dear Patterson just wants him to be a little more mean. A little more edge. <laughs> a little edge, yeah. Chavsky to punt it. Kevante Turpin with a fair catch and you breathe a sigh of relief anytime you see that when you're the punting team. TCU back on offense. There is Anderson huge week last week couple big games against Texas in his career trying to get things charged up this afternoon. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman. Horn Frogs back on offense down 7 6 here, early stages of the second quarter. Sean Robinson steps up, zips one incomplete, and buried into the dirt as he got hit as he let it go by Gerald Wilbon. And they brought in extra bodies to help out with protection, but watch big number 94. And they slant the line right at the snap of the football. So it makes it hard for those offensive linemen. They've got to deal with a moving target. Second and ten, they run it into a corner blitz. Devontae Davis coming off of the edge to help shut it down, and it's third and long. The corner blitz has become so popular as a way of basically helping to provide a force defender to stop the run and help create that edge. But so far in this game, neither team has really been able to convert on third down. And it's in part because they keep putting themselves in third and long. Now the Horn Frogs 0 for 3 so far. Texas was really good on third down defensively as that game went on against USC last week. Part of what helped them turn it around. They bring pressure. Robinson off his back foot with a miscommunication with against or with Turpin, who decided to break the route off against Davis while Robinson threw it long. And a lot of times when a defense is disguising the type of coverage they're playing, in particular the cornerback, if he's up, if he's off, is he playing more of a cloud, meaning he's playing about six yards off in that gray area? It makes it hard if you've got a route adjustment to determine that. So it's so important for a wide receiver and quarterback to be on the same page. Jamison to return Andrew David's punt. Short one. Special teams problems for the Horn Frogs continue. He doesn't even get it to midfield. It's just a 26 yard punt for David. Fox College football is presented by the all new totally remix Volkswagen Jetta. 
We were talking a little bit about the slow starts the Longhorns have had over the first few weeks, doing their best to address those things. We go down to Bruce Feldman. Joe, after that Tulsa game two weeks ago, Sam Ellinger created a goal chart for the team with 10 categories. He said they need it. They now hang in their locker room. And one of those things, which was score on the first possession, no three and outs, no turnover, score 80% in the red zone. He said we needed to be more intrinsically focused. And uh, if they get seven out of the 10 of those achieve it, he said, I'll probably buy the team tacos or donuts or something like that. He did use intrinsically. Good Great word usage. Yeah. yeah. And right at the top of that list was the score on the first drive, get off to a better start. They go to Trey Watson on first down. He keeps the legs turning, keeps the pile moving. That has five or six. So far, the difference, at least in this matchup, going back and looking at the past four years, is just the way Texas is running the ball early on. I mean, really trying to set that precedent and set the tone early here. They're going to dominate the line of scrimmage. They want to be the more physical team. Motion Watson out, so an empty set on second down. Quarterback draw. Ellinger almost broke it. Does have enough for a first down. Behind that offensive line you're talking about that a year ago dealt with so many injuries. Another key injury to open this year was Zach Shackelford, the center, leaving. And the trickle down effect of that is Elijah Rodriguez has moved to center. Derek Kerstetter has moved to guard. And a right tackle, Samuel Cosme, has entered the lineup. I like Cosme. I mean, this young man is a redshirt freshman, a right tackle. He's got a bright future. Very athletic. Kind of mean as Herb Hand, their offensive line coach at Texas, talks about him. There's Shackelford, you saw on the sideline. Empty set again. Quarterback draw again. Ellinger fighting for close to a first down. This is a big fella, 6'3", 235 pounds. He's got enough for a Texas first down. You know, when he runs the football, he has flashes of kind of Tim Tebow as far as his running style. You know, not really going to try to be too elusive. He's just going to try to run you over and pick up those tough yards again north and south. You know, I know Gary Patterson didn't mean it as a slight to Sam Ellinger, but he called him this week a running back playing quarterback. I think Sam liked that. He didn't like it. No. Next question was kind of the response from that was brought up to him. They're on the bubble screen. Freshman Joshua Moore for a gain of five. Moore had his first career touchdown last week. Burner out of Yoakum, Texas. Really sparked that onslaught that you saw against USC last week. Second and five. Back to Moore in space. Got tripped up. Nice open field tackle by Ennis Gaines. They mark him a yard short, third and one. And this is one of the tendencies Gary Patterson talked about. He said, look, when, when 14's in the game, Joshua Moore, they try to get him the ball quick and let him run. The tough part is, all right, try to stop him. I mean, he's that good out in space, and he's that quick. Ingram's back in the game. He's got it here, and he loses yards. L.J. Collier was in there with Garrett Wallow, and they go from third and one to fourth and a long one or two. It looks like they are going to kick. What do you think? But look, you're playing at home. You got good field position. You know, you want to continue to keep carrying on the momentum of, of scoring points and getting down this part of the field. So, this early in the game, I'm okay with this. I mean, and, and Dicker's done a good job. But we've seen the win already, perhaps, play a factor. You're talking about that right off at the top. And we saw Dicker miss his first field goal as a Longhorn. He's on the other end of the field. This one from 34. And it is perfect. Texas extends the lead as Dicker knocks it through. Back to Austin after this. Come your way on the State Farm halftime with Texas A&M finally provide top-ranked Alabama with some competition. Urban Meyer makes his delayed 2018 debut for the Buckeyes. And 12th ranked West Virginia opens up Big 12 play. Joe Brady, we'll see you guys at the half. All right, Rob, looking forward to it. 10 6 here in Austin in the Big 12 opener between Texas and TCU. Strong kick over Turpin's head. 
Let's take a look at our turbocharged players rarely seen in slow motion sponsored by Volkswagen key receiver on each side having good starts. Colin Johnson for Texas some big plays early on that's pretty much what he's been so far this year for Texas and Jalen Rager same thing. You look at him helping to get TCU down to the red zone that portion of the field they couldn't try quite convert but got a field goal out of it. Very good. The Big 12 co-freshman of the year last year had more touchdown catches than any other true freshman in the country. And another good start this season. Lined up to the top of the screen on first down from the 25. Quickly outside to Jalen Austin. Devontae Davis stymies him. He lost the ball, but they say that he stepped out of bounds before it came out. Let's take another look. There's Davis. And yeah, that ball's coming out. Now the question is, was the ball out of bounds when it dropped to the ground? And if it wasn't possessed, it would go back to the last team that possessed it. And, and then, then you're looking to see if Jones. Davis you know, or Jones was out of bounds when they touched it. Watch when it touches Brandon Jones. His right foot is on the sideline right now, and the ball hits him. Yeah. So this is going to be TCU football, even, even if there were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they will play on second down and six. Robinson with a straight drop this time has one on one, lofting it downfield, perfectly thrown but dropped. Chris Boyd defending Rager. Not sure if Boyd got his hand in or not. Rager with a shot at a big play, but can't pull it in. Everything about that play was phenomenal. It was a perfect ball, a good release by Rager to get a step. And, and you couldn't put this anywhere else. But it's the late hands again by Boyd to disrupt the completion. Yeah. Look at that right hand came out of nowhere. Horn Frogs 0 for 4 on third down so far. On third and six, pressure picked up. Robinson, eyes downfield, needs the 35, extends the ball. We'll see where they spot him. It looks like with just enough. This is something they want Sean Robinson to do more of. Yeah, offensive coordinator Sonny Cumbie talked about it. He said, you know, we don't want him running all the time, but there are times when if he sees some daylight, he's that good of a runner. We want him to take off and be able to pick up first downs like this. Look out on the sideline, huh? Head on a swivel down there, buddy. Alana Lua. With a short game, we go down to Bruce. Joe, just an update. Cordell Uwagu, who Sonny Cumbie had told us was really one of the leaders of that offensive line, he's been out for a couple of series with a left ankle injury. They're questionable to see if he'll be back. All right, Bruce. Trey Elliott has flipped over to left guard. Chris Gaynor, who is typically part of a rotation, a right guard, handling that spot. Trying to get the ground game going. Close to 200 yards in the first half last week. Turpin with a double pass. Out in front of Rager and picked off. Caden Stearns the interception. This is why they're so in love with this true freshman. His ability to not get his eyes caught anywhere else in the field. He starts right there, and he's going to move back to the middle with the motion. But he never gets fooled thinking that he needs to come up to help out. He sees it the entire way. Not necessarily a bad ball by Turpin. That's not something he's going to be accustomed to doing, you know, looking off a safety like that. Boy, if there's one thing that Stearns is reportedly not a lead at it's just simple foot speed he covered a lot of ground to pick that ball off a ton of ground and that's what they're so high on him about is his sideline to sideline ability maybe not the best early on right now in coverage but when they put him back in the middle of the field he does as good a job as anyone Running diagnosing the pass routes the previous play is under further review and they're going to check to make sure he got a foot in bounds and maintain possession of the football And, it's, and if you're TCU, you know, every single game, you've got a wrinkle like that. You've got a reverse. You've got potentially a double pass, something like that.
Let's take another look. Possession. Meet. That's good in the NFL. This may be something they're looking at here. The hit on Cavante Turpin. With the hand to his face mask. From Brandon Jones. Yeah. So this would be a form of, of targeting in this case. And as you continue to take a look at this, we bring in our rules expert, Dean Blandino. Dean, hope your day's off to a good start. What are you seeing on this one? Yeah, two things. The interception, which looks good, control, like you said, looks like he got both feet down. But then the hit on the passer, defender leaves his feet, looks like there's a launch and there's forcible contact to the head and neck. I think they're looking at this for potential targeting. And remember, Brandon Jones, who's, who's the player we're talking about here, he's one of those safeties. But B.J. Foster for Texas got called for targeting last week in the second half. That's why he's not it rotating in so far today because he's going to miss the first half of today's game. There are two different variations of targeting. 9-1-3 using the After crowd. further Nine review, there is no foul for targeting. The ball was intercepted. It's first down. 9-1-4 is when you go to the head or neck of a defenseless player with the indicator like Dean mentioned, but they don't see enough on replay to add that on. And so the call and the interception stand. Texas takes over at its own 38 leading 10 6 midway through this first quarter. And Sam Ellinger who was below 50 percent in a well played game last week. Maybe a little bit deceiving those numbers had some drops. Point is is off to a very efficient start in this one at 10 of 13. And out of an empty set on first down will throw underneath for Trey Watson who had a lot of space ahead of him but nice job to shed the block by Vernon Scott. Well then they've used this formation a number of times an empty formation where they motion out the running back and it creates a box count that's favorable for the run or that a screen out in space. Where there's no other defender besides the guy who's covering Trey Watson. This is that portion of the field where if you're Texas Someone's would like to take a shot. Someone's just calling Johnson, Devin Duvernay. Simple handoff here. Watson trying to get the edge. Stumbles out of bounds. Nico Small with a tackle. Third and short. Small limps his way off. You've got Daniel Young coming in for Texas. He's the more physical back between him and Trey Watson when you watch his running style six foot 225 pounds but he gets his pads low Another one of those north south runners first carry of the day for him and it gets shut down by Wallow. Well, you talked about how big and strong Young is. Wallow, who's a converted safety, stuck his nose in there and slammed him short. It's fourth and one. We talk about a guy replacing big shoes. I mean, Trevon Howard from a year ago. He was a tackling machine for TCU. Very similar. Former safety moves the linebacker, has the athleticism to make those sorts of plays. How about this? Offense stand on the field with a fourth down and one. And this is where Sam Ellinger really gets involved in the running game. Duck his hands underneath center. Instead, they flip it outside, and I don't think they got it. Flipped it to Young, who might have lost a yard, with Rico Evans and Jeff Gladney. And Texas turns it over on downs in its own end. Well, again, don't like the play call. One to the short side of the field. If you want to have some sort of pitch play to the outside, at least give the runner more space to work with. So TCU is going to have fantastic field position when you come back. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Verizon. Now go mix and match family unlimited plans and by the all new totally remix Volkswagen Jetta. Back here in Austin back here in Texas where they do barbecue right. Oh. Texas style Dalmatian rub Franklin barbecue. Pepper, oh it. my gosh. Best I've ever had man. So good beef ribs. 622 left first half and TCU after stopping Texas on downs has great field position and a good opportunity here. That's Hager jumping off sides for the second time today. 
And he, he's been a player that has a tendency to do this a number of times so far this year. Offside, number 44 of the defense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Now, typically, he gets a really good jump on the snap of the football, but sometimes those guys who are on edge waiting for the snap to get that jump didn't have an issue with cadence. Not used to that quarterback being under center. A little, little, little different there, then, huh? <laughs> what is this, 1990s? <laughs> so first and five, and put him back in 2018 in the gun. Fake to Anderson. Jarrison Stewart has room and has a first down. Senior out of Mesquite, Texas, coming off his best game. Just one catch the first two games, had three last week. Yeah, only his fifth catch of the season. And I, another one of those guys kind of rotates in. It's just so good when he gets it at ball out in space. Jet sweep to Jalen Rager, and this one's blown up. Flying out of his linebacker's spot, Gary Johnson. We talked about Texas trying to run the football between the tackles. Kind of surprised TCU hasn't wanted to do that a little bit more. Only because their offensive line's pretty pretty well so far this season. They've got a lot of size. They've got a lot of physicality. Well, I mean, how about Darius Anderson, who last week had 154 yards, has averaged more than 100 yards a game against Texas in his career. He's got two carries, no yards so far today. He's got it here, and he loses a couple. Chris Nelson, the fifth-year senior, who said that he wants this game more than any other. And you can see the way they're playing up front so far, getting penetration, being able to slant and slide through. Once they get on an angle, instead of just about getting to the backfield and bringing down Anderson, the jet they call him before he gets started. Stopped him on the runway. Third and 16. Texas looking like they're bringing pressure. Sometimes it's, it's more of the illusion of pressure to get you out of what you want to go to. Either way, look for Jalen Rager. It was an illusion initially. They bring an extra man. He got rid of it incomplete. Brandon Jones, they showed one thing, brought a different pressure, and got home with it. Well, that's the biggest key. You know, you make an adjustment as an offense, and the defense is going to do the exact same thing. He comes right from that side of the field. Robinson waiting for Rager to get to the window, and that's the man he's got to beat. I'm not sure if he ever really felt like he knew that he was going to be coming free. Either way. Big time stop for the Texas defense. Yeah, after they were backed up, TCU starting that drive in Texas territory, promptly enforcing the punt. Andrew David. Good hang time on this one, and a fair catch taken by Jones back at the five. And so Sam Ellinger and this Texas offense back at it. Son of a pair of Texas grads, Sam is. Grew up going to games here. Yeah, it seats on the 30 yard line, about 30 rows up. Dreaming of playing at Texas. He said he thinks about how crazy it is every time he runs through the smoke here at DKR. Glances over his shoulder, looks up at that spot that used to sit with his family. Living the dream and hoping to be the guy that can get Texas football back to national prominence. Sophomore starts this drive with a handoff that Joseph Broadnax sniffs out, shutting down Daniel Young for a loss with a flag down. Broadnax, a part of that defensive front for TCU, is missing Blaylock, probably their best defensive lineman, maybe their best defensive player. He was injured before the season started. A personal foul, chop block by number 68 and 72 on the offense. The penalty is declined. It's second down. That's the center, Elijah Rodriguez, and the right guard, Derek Kirkstetter. And, and what that means is you can't engage both high and low at the same time on a defensive player. That's illegal. And um, bad memories from last week being backed into this end zone for Texas. Got away with what? Very close to a safety. Some people would have called him a safety. Garrett Wallow shot of a cannon to shut down Young. You can't say enough about how Garrett Wallow has played thus far today. Watch how fast he moves to the football. At the snap, diagnoses it, and as soon as the window opened, he's filling his run gap. And that's really what makes this defense for TCU so special. All these players can play so fast because they know their assignments. 
Third down and 12. Will Jordan Humphrey even have a catch yet today? No. Ellinger. Safe play. That may be a yard. Ty Summers, one of his first tackles of the afternoon. And a nice job by TCU's defense to deliver a three and out and get the ball back to the offense with good field position again. You know, LJ Humphrey, their leading receiver on the season. I don't think he's even been targeted maybe more than once. It's been all about Colin Johnson. The Texas passing game. And Avuchevsky to punt out of his own end zone. One tendency for Texas, they tend to the punt to the side of, of Brandon Jones, number 19. So it allows you to maybe rush one side or at least set up a return. Flag down. Line drive punt, fair catch, Turpin. So it's on TCU. Offside by number one of the defense. Penalties declined. It's first down. And Tom Herman and the Longhorns just happy to have gotten it out of their own end zone there with no adventures. Well, then that's where because you're so far backed up, th there's really a greater reward than risk when you go on a some sort of double count or hard count like that if you're the punt team. So why not? Because if you end up having a guy jump, you're only going to back up so far, probably half the distance to the goal line. Whereas you can maybe get a little extra yardage, but in this case, they're satisfied with the punt. How about this Horn Frog offense, Brady? Really impressive first drive. Robinson completed his first six passes. Not a whole lot doing since. When well, talking to Sonny Cumbie, he talked about the fact that we're not going to be able to move the ball efficiently. It's going to be more bigger shots downfield and big plays. Alana Lua trying to outrun the defense, getting four. And that's what TCU needs to do. They need to get back to the running game. You talked about the lack of touches the last drive for TCU for Darius Anderson. As he comes back into the game. Team that put up 40 or put up 28 on Ohio State. Texas holding them to six. A couple of field goals here in the first half. They gave him a good spot on that first down play. So second and four. Anderson waits for a hole to develop. Flag flies as he gets across the 35. I think it's going to be holding on Trey Elliott, number 52. Holding by number 52 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, and it's still second down. Good odds. Thank you. Well, it's what happens when you see a defensive lineman bust through the line, and then all of a sudden you see some laundry drop next to him. Typically, that's, the, that's your cause and effect. And in that case, it did help Anderson get to the outside. And as TCU can't afford to suffer these sorts of mistakes especially that backs them up on first and second down and they haven't been able to overcome that on third down. They're just one for six on third down today facing a lot of third and longs. Here at second and 14 Robinson to run set up his blocks well cut it against the grain and sets up a manageable third and three. Just the way he runs I mean he almost kind of floats and I think he's deceptively fast. I don't know why they don't try to incorporate him more with design runs. When you talk to Sonny Cumbin, he says, well, we'd like them to take off, take off more. Well, take that, take out the decision making. Just make it a design quarterback run. He's good enough to hurt you. But this has been his Achilles heel so far, is his passing on third down. Below 40% on the year, 0 for 4 today on third down. Option play Robinson they took the decision out of his hands. He took advantage first down inside the 20 as Robinson gets 17 on third and short. I mean he's a big quarterback. He, he can take these hits. He's 6'2, 230 pounds. There's PJ Locke who's going to take Shea Wulanalua and then it's all Robinson and his vision and look at the blocking downfield too by the TCU wide receivers. Got a key one from Jalen Rager. Horn Frogs on the move first down from the 17. Here's Rager. He juggled and caught it and stumbled and got six. That's Five the, or six. Second down inside of a minute. It was the cut block by Tay Barber, the true freshman. I mean, for starters, you love to see that of a true freshman, that sort of physical play. But two, it's legal. Remember, this year, rule change has to be within five yards of the line of scrimmage.
Alana Lewis stop and start. PJ Locke with a tackle and he stretches it close to the first down marker. TCU takes a timeout. They've got one left. Back in 30 seconds. Coming up at the half, stay tuned for Rob Stone and the guys with the State Farm Halftime Show. SEC West Battle, Texas A&M, top-ranked Alabama. Urban Meyer with his debut this season. And West Virginia putting on a show against K-State. This is a scenario when it's third and short like this. You might have two play calls because you're coming off of a timeout. you still got a timeout to utilize in case you don't get this and have to make a decision on fourth down. Sometimes when you have a little additional time, that's what you'd like to do because 22 sec 24 seconds excuse me is enough to be able to run two plays and not burn that time out. You incorporate in Sean Robinson in the run game again here got to have to you know because the, the guy who's going to be the free defender for him is the guy who's furthest from the ball. It's going to be the safety right here. I mean typically that's why you like the quarterback run game because you've got the numbers as long as everyone executes and does their job. The guy for this away has to be able to stop you on third and inches before yeah you get less than a yard. TCU looking for a fifth consecutive win against Texas. Sean Robinson no stage too big for this sophomore. Third down less than a yard. It is Robinson. He is inside the one. And it's first down and goal for TCU. And right now, they're signaling to run. Looks like a clock play. And a quarterback sneak. And doesn't look like he got it. Eight seconds. They'll use their final timeout with five seconds we'll see if they adjust that Gary Patterson's begging that they put a few seconds back on another quick break they very quickly added five seconds so no timeouts but 10 seconds left here I'm surprised they didn't review that last play I would have been curious to see if they would have looked for where his forward progress was if he broke the plane all that stuff but we're moving on 10 seconds left second down here's what you got Obviously, you're going to have to be throwing the football because you can't afford to take a sack or run the football and knock it in. Clock's running out. Ten seconds isn't enough. So I think you should maybe look at trying to get Sean Robinson to the outside, give him an opportunity in a run-pass kind of mode. And see, so he's clearly short. The ball almost came out. Oh, and that's the other thing. I mean, there, was, there was a lot to review on that. But in this case, again, getting him to the outside, getting him moving, gives him the ability to run the football, potentially get it in that way, or throw the football or throw it away. And that way you don't have to worry about taking a loss if you get pressure because you're outside the tackle box. One of the key moments in Texas's win against USC was slamming the door at the goal line. Looking for a stand here in the closing seconds of the first half. Second and goal from the one. They'll throw it. End zone, Rager for the TCU touchdown. And the Horn Frogs back in front, beating the first half buzzer. Just one on one, and he's going to run a little fade route. Watch as he kind of works to the outside. This is a perfectly thrown ball by Sean Robinson. And see how Rager gets his hand on Boyd to create the separation? This time, the difference two hands on the ball, rip it down into your body. Don't allow Chris Boyd to get that late hand in there again to disrupt the completion. Extra point from Jonathan Song. The Horn Frogs take advantage of the exceptional field position after the short punt. Trickle down of Texas selecting to go for it a couple of drives ago on fourth down, getting stopped at its own 45 yard line. TCU quickly had to punt after that. But then the defense forced to three and out. And able to capitalize on the next drive to go back in front. I think the thing that stands out the most is just the job that both of these defenses have done on, on third down. 
So far, Texas is 0 for 6 in this game. You know, TCU, not, not a ton better, 3 for 8. But in particular, on that last drive, at, you know, at, at this point in the half, was really were able to convert a number of third downs. But Yeah, they were 0 for 5 to start, and they've converted their last three. And, it's, and, and you're looking at it kind of feeling like, well, both teams are moving the football, but when they're getting into the fringe or red zone areas of the field, that's when each defense is kind of been a little bit more salty. Bowen up. Curious to see what adjustments are made at halftime when they kind of come back out with some of these counter punches. These two teams know each other so well. Well, Bunce with a squibber. Kate Brewer falls on it at the 27. Clock operator, I think, had to hit the restroom. <laughs> Matter he's hungry. I think he heard we have Franklin's down here. Uh, it's all gone. Sorry. <laughs> a pretty good first half for Allinger, right? 11 of 14. 115 yards, no touchdowns, but no picks. Yeah, and again, he's taking the chances to run the football when it's been there, too. Hasn't forced anything. We saw him week one. I, I think the thing that concerned you is late in game how what kind of decisions he makes um, a couple poor decisions versus Maryland ultimately they lost that game but since then has been much better with his decision making the second half. Oh well, looks like he's going to get tested in a close game again late 13 10 after a half in Austin. Now we get you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles. Welcome back to Fox College Football, sponsored by the all-new Totally Remix Volkswagen Jetta. 13-10 TCU trying to beat Texas for the fifth consecutive season as we get ready, get you ready to start half number two. Joe Davis with Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman again in a moment. And I know you were talking late in that first half about looking forward to the adjustments we were going to see coming out of the break. Yeah, really, a couple big-time performers for each team on offense. I've really gotten going Darius Anderson. We saw just yeah. a big game last week versus Ohio State only three carries for two yards and LJ Humphrey. I mean he's right. really been the leading wide receiver for this Texas offense. They haven't been able to find him only one target zero catches. Curious to see how they get those playmakers involved. What have you thought of the quarterback play so far. Both of them have done a good job of taking care of the football. That's gonna be the biggest thing in a tight game and also utilizing their legs. I mean they're both athletic enough to run the football uh, in particular on third down when that moment presents itself. So. Uh, biggest thing so far and we talked about it in regards to Sam Ellinger can he continue to make good decisions down the way for Texas TCU will kick it off to open this second half it'll be the Longhorns getting it Texas trying to build off of last week's win against USC here in the Big 12 opener the 89th meeting between these programs Deshaun Jameson will bring it out of the end zone and get submarine crossing the 20 we go down to Bruce Feldman Joe it sounds like Brady was channeling Gary Patterson because Patterson told me he's like we got to get after these guys in the quarterback run game we got to do something to keep them honest. And that's going to be an emphasis. Now, for Tom Herman, he said, we were in this exact same spot last week against USC, and we took it to those guys. Now, we're playing a better team today, he said, but I've told him, if we play our best, our best will be good enough. All right, Bruce, from the 24-yard line, Texas opens his second half with a pass play and a sack. It's the first of the season for Ben Banigou, the Big 12's preseason defensive player of the year. And we take a look at the Geico first half stats. Very balanced, very even between these two teams. Yeah, even when you look at the play selection, too, both these teams trying to run the football and set the tone off of that. But I mean, so far, very evenly matched game. The particular thing that stands out is third down. TCU got to go at the end of the first half. It's a loss of eight. Now the first play of the second half for Texas. Ellinger trying to get some of it back. Throws behind L.J. Humphrey with the coverage from Vernon Scott. 
Third and 18 going to be hard to improve those third down numbers when you're sitting third and 18. We talked about the adjustments. Well, they're bracketing LJ Humphrey. You see Evans on the inside. You get the safety then ends up picking him up after a reroute. It's typical Gary Patterson defense. They're going to try to take away your one or two best options and make you go somewhere else. And Humphrey's still looking for his first catch of the day. Empty it out on third and long and against a three man rush. Ellinger still has to step up and get what he can. Not a good opening drive of the second half for Texas. Evans and Summers combined to bring Ellinger down and a three and out. We talked about the goals that Sam Ellinger and the rest of the Texas offense set out for themselves a fast start. That doesn't just mean the beginning of the game. It also means coming out of halftime when you get the ball and you make those adjustments. You got to have that script ready. You got to be better be ready to execute and come out and deal with some of the adjustments from your opponent. Luchowski to angle it towards the sideline. Good to hang time and so no chance for Turpin to get his hands on it. TCU ready to go for its first drive of the second half. This offense 511 yards against Ohio State last week and in this one it looked like they were due to duplicate those numbers on the first drive as he completed six of his first six but has cooled off since. I think you look at the scoring drives too. What else did you notice him getting involved in the running game. To keep that in the back of his mind when he sees some open green space. Sophomore from DeSoto High School here in Texas with a straight drop on first down. He pumps short and goes long. Wanting Turpin and double coverage. Cavante Turpin adjusted and caught it. Beating Devontae Davis and Caden Stearns for 40 yards. We saw it at the very beginning of the game. A slant and go to Jalen Rager. Now we see it with Turpin working on Davis for the big game. Pump short again, looking downfield and an interception. Brandon Jones gift wrapped right into the numbers from Sean Robinson. Well, they were trying to work Jalen Rager trailing Turpin up the sideline. Keep an eye on number one. This is where he's trying to go with the football. See how they fake the screen? And then as Turpin clears it out, there's Rager, but I, I just that's a poorly thrown football. There's no other way of putting it. Or he just never saw him. I mean, right to but, him. But even if he's not there, that ball's not yeah. getting to Jalen Rager. You said it best, gift wrapped. It doesn't get much easier than that. The only thing you're praying and hoping as a quarterback in that instance is that he plays defense for a reason. Maybe he doesn't have good hands. Right. In that case, Jones caught it for the interception. First Horn Frog turnover today, or second Horn Frog turnover today. Yeah, from the 20 yard line. A short gain on first down with Garrett Wallow getting his team leading eight tackle. Boy Robinson just never looks phased though does he? Again that he's replacing Kenny Hill now an assistant who's coaching him up there. Play action. Free rusher. Ellinger chased by Banigou. Heaves it out of bounds, and it's third and long again. You know, the way that play ended, people are going to think that, you know, Banigou had a little extra onto it, but, but it almost looked like Sam Ellinger kind of twisted him and threw him, threw him away. But you know, Banigou gets up to the upside. I mean, you can't put a tight end on him, put Andrew Beck, and expect him to be able to do the job. And this looks a little late. And it looked like Banigou was almost trying to hold on, though, to help keep him up. I don't think it's as egregious as some of the Longhorns fans in the stadium feel based on that angle. So a good no call, third down and eight. Texas 0 for 7 on third down so far. And over the last two years against TCU, 4 for 24 on third down. Frog showing pressure from the near side within his games. So Texas adjusting with five to snap it. He circled LJ Humphrey. Ellinger with time, but the coverage downfield leads to the pocket collapsing. Secondary with the assist for LJ Collier to pick up the sack. Well, the biggest thing about playing coverage is playing your leverage. 
Look at how every single defender is pattern matching. They understand what Texas is trying to do based on their formations. But they keep their leverage. They, they push the wide receivers to the outside, force them to where they have another defender waiting for them. And then the pressure eventually gets there. And that's really been the M.O. of this TCU defense throughout the course of this matchup. Short punt. Fair catch from Turpin. 13-10 TCU. Early stages of the second half. Fox College football is sponsored by Jeep. Get a great deal at the Jeep Adventure Days event. And by Wendy's, the official hamburger of NCAA football. Back in Austin, Darius Anderson, two huge games against Texas through his career, and coming off a big game last week. He's only carried it three times today, negative two yards total. And I think TCU is going to make a concentrated effort to get him the football more. It's not just running. I mean, the screen game as well. And a TCU record 93 yard touchdown against Ohio State last week. Warren showing pressure. Well, the thing is, when you're loading up the box to stop the run, you have no other choice than to throw the football. That's yeah. part of it, too, when Anderson's in. He's got it on first down with a bit of a hold off the right side. Anthony Wheeler stops him. Anderson really broke onto the scene and started to earn that jet nickname against these Longhorns as a freshman when he had a 70 yard touchdown was recruited by Texas. A big get for TCU junior from Richmond Texas. Option on second and six got rid of it to Anderson. Third and short as he gets three more and Chris Nelson runs him down. That was an athletic play by Sean Robinson. I thought for a second it was almost going to be a disaster, but they run this speed option from time to time, and I can't get over how comfortable he is with the football. I mean, I, you go back to last week, he had a similar play versus Ohio State. He held on to that football so long, I thought at some point that ball was just going to pop out and an Ohio State defender was going to end up with it. 6 2, 2 30, but like you said, kind of glides when he moves. Third and three. Bigger back, Alana Lewis in. And again with a loaded box, they'll throw it. Pump short, double move works again. First down as Turpin hangs on despite the blow from Jones. Once again, they go back to the double move. This worked earlier in the last drive. Jeez. Texas Longhorns just biting on it. Bronte Davis got his feet in cement there. After that first move, Zalana Lua gets six yards. And how about Turpin at 5'9, 157 hanging on? Well, how about a, maybe potentially being targeting call, right? He's in the process of making a catch. He's defenseless. And that hit looked like it was initiated above the shoulders to the neck and head area. Second and four. Back to Alana Lua. Bounce into the outside. And ridden down by Chris Boyd. And remember, Texas will get back B.J. Foster, their true freshman safety, who missed the first half due to a targeting call in last week's game. At some point, he'll show up. They're wearing 25 in burnt orange when he does. Third down and two for the Horn Frogs. Trevante Heights in the game. He's a taller wide receiver at 6'3 at the top of the screen. Robinson runs and loses a yard into the short side where P.J. Locke was waiting with Chris Boyd. These edge defenders. Watch number 11. Diagnosis sheds Tay Barber, makes the tackle. Chris Boyd there as well to help. Clearly, Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator for Texas, has gotten this Longhorn defense keying in on these quarterback runs by Sean Robinson. So the field goal team comes out. Jonathan Song in his first week handling the kicking duties. He's hit his first two. He's hit all three. And in his career, because if you go back to last year, he was the starter before he got hurt. Jonathan Song is 11 for 11 at TCU. This was the big play that set it up. Cavante Turpin absorbed the blow and hung on. Horn Frogs extend the lead here in Austin.
Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by NFL Sunday Ticket only on Direct TV. I hope the uh, TCU band members have good eyesight. <laughs> Over the nosebleeds. You yeah. can't even see them from our booth. You actually got to almost squat down and look up. You do. Get the binoculars out. They're making some noise, though. Uh huh. I'm told. I would imagine. I see the instruments. I heard them uh, earlier in the game. Did you? Once. Okay. Deshaun Jamison back to receive this kick. But a good game. Very evenly matched, these two teams seem to be. 16 10. Jamison, gumption from the freshman. Out of his own end zone. There's a block in the back. It's going to tee this thing inside the 10 yard line to open the drive for Texas. Yeah, it's going to be on Josh Thompson. And really, no need if you're Thompson for this clip. I think. The returner was just fine getting to the outside, but I believe it was on Travante Heights. And that was probably the initial flag. It looks like there was another penalty at some point. During the return, an illegal block in the back by number 15 of the return team. Yeah, I don't think so. That penalty is declined. <laughs> oh, here we go. Then there Here's was a holding no. by the return team. That penalty will be declined, de accepted half the distance to the goal, first down. I think it was 87, Cooper. We got there. Doesn't matter what he says or what we say. It'll be first and ten from the five when we come back to Austin. As Texas offense not a whole lot doing lately, getting ready to start this drive from their own five-yard line. Before they do, we go down to Bruce. Who's getting an update from somebody? It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> We're going down to Bruce and his friends. We'll check in again with him in a second. First and ten from the five. And a handoff to Ingram. We'll get some, some breathing room. Bruce, have you stepped aside from your buddy? Can you give us a report now? Sorry about that, Joe. Nico Small, uh, free safety. One of the smartest guys on Gary Patterson's defense. Hamstring injury not expected back. Markel Simmons is stepping in for him right now. All right. Here's Ingram again. With the first down back to back carries getting him out to the 20 it was questionable today with a knee injury he went to the locker room with what the trainers told Bruce was a hip issue but has come back and getting the first two touches here they get first three touches cut down this time by Rico Evans and it sounded like from talking with the coaching staff his injury was a bone bruise and an MCL sprain which is exactly what Aaron Rodgers was dealing with the Green Bay Packers so as long as there's no concern about injuring it worse it really comes down to pain tolerance and I'm sure that's something that he's trying to play through and deal with right now. Second down and eight. Four straight runs on this drive for Ingram. Finishes forward for another Texas first down. Look at the rushing attack for Texas in the first half. I thought they did a pretty good job helping to pave the way. Decent average, but sometimes that big offensive line starts to wear you down. We're down a defensive front that doesn't have a ton of depth for TCU. You mentioned the injury earlier to Ross Blacklock, who is your top interior lineman. Big one. A trickle down from that being felt, perhaps. During preseason camp, lost him for the year to an Achilles injury. Faked Ingram this time. He's in the pass pattern. Ellinger hit as he throws. And TCU has started to turn the pressure up. Seven sacks against Texas a year ago, and they're starting to make Ellinger feel him here in the second. And it's stunts and games. Watch Ty Summers. He's going to keep working, keep working. Banagoo as well. It's it's the way they go about rushing too. They're slanting, they're angling, they're doing different things to find those mismatches up front of the offensive line. Didn't have a sack in the first half. They've already got two here in the second. 
And then hit him there. Made it second and ten. Andrew Beck, the tight end. One of the team leaders getting a gain of six. Now Beck missed all of last season with a foot injury. And his return is big for football reasons, getting a true tight end in the offense, but it's huge getting a leader like him back. He sets up third and four. Ellinger rolls, turns the shoulders, finds Johnson for a first down to the 45. That's a good play. That's progress for Sam Ellinger. Earlier in the year when he would roll out and make these throws, he would wait a little bit too long. He'd almost wait until the wide receiver was already open. In this case, he got that ball out and on time. Not necessarily the most accurate, but you can sacrifice some accuracy if your timing's on point because of the separation the wide receiver has from the defender. How about first third down conversion today for Texas on their ninth try? Ellinger to throw it on first down. Steps into it. Back shoulder. Humphrey has arrived here in the third quarter. Leading receiver on the season for Texas as his first catch of the day. And watch as Sam Ellinger takes a hit. Ben Banneker once again, he's going to have to stay tough in the pocket to make this throw. And finally, Humphrey gets a catch. For 27 yards into TCU territory. First down from the 33. Ellinger to throw again. Pocket collapsing. Hit as he throws, and it flutters incomplete. That time, L.J. Collier with the hit. And that looks like the left tackle, Calvin Anderson, the transfer from Rice, struggling to get up. Saw a couple plays ago, Ty Summers working against him. These TCU edge rushers, Banagu, Summers, both with so much speed. And once they get you to turn your body and you get a little bit off balance, you become a lot less more powerful. On second down, Watson. Nice cut. Watson, first down. Running hard for a gain of a dozen. TCU brings a corner blitz. Watson wisely feels it and stays to the front side of the running play where he found a crease. Texas in a hurry. First down and 10. Ellinger steps up, keeps his eyes downfield. Now extends the play. Running out of time. And going down. Sacked by Evans and Collier. And there was about four or five different chances for the TCU defensive front to get Ellinger. That's how slippery he is. I mean, he's not the fastest, but he's quick. And he's kind of got the ability to start and stop and make you miss in short places. Quick and not an easy guy to pull down at 235 pounds. Throwing into the blitz here. Watson, boy, if he had hung on, had a chance at something there with Gaines gambling. Instead, it's another loss, and it's third and long. This Texas offensive line right now looks gassed. I always think these long drives end up being wearing on the defense. Sometimes they are for the guys up front, too. Yeah, look at those guys huffing and puffing. Hands on the hips. All the tail sides. Side, yeah. It's never fun when you're a quarterback standing there looking at your old lineman in front of you like that, huh? Well, then this is where you kind of look at the down and distance. You want to take a shot. Johnson, Humphrey, depending on the type of coverage you get. Need the eight yard line for a first down. Two to snap it. Against a three man rush. Ellinger wafts it up there. Incomplete. And no flag. A hundred thousand begging for one, but won't get it. Fourth down. And this falls off the mark once again because of Banagoo. But as you see, they played cloud coverage, meaning they got two guys on that side of the field devoted to Colin Johnson. A lot of contact between Vernon Scott and Johnson, but no call. You mentioned the pressure from Banagoo with just a three man rush, still able to get home. With eight guys in coverage, a dangerous throw out there. Cameron Dicker comes on. For a 43 yard attempt that he hooks badly. Wow. Second miss of the day for Dicker. And a promising drive ends with no points. It remains 16 10, TCU. This is the response from Tom Herman when they didn't get the pass interference call. From bad to worse, still down six. Thursday night's about to get a whole lot bigger as Fox becomes the new network home for Thursday night football. And how about this matchup? Vikings and Rams at 7.30 Eastern this week on Fox 
now it's a game. Can't wait to watch that one. Vikings will have a little more rest too because they got a bye this week and they play Buffalo. <laughs> Come on. Buffalo doesn't even have a microphone to stand up for itself. <laughs> Here's Anderson. Short gain on first down. Gary Johnson with a tackle. This game's kind of been played between what 25 yard lines team shifting field position back and forth but neither team able to break away yet. That's come down to some field goal kicks too. And if you look at Texas you got three true freshmen involved the snapper the holder and the kicker so you can't always feel so confident about that. Robinson to run it. Boy he is so explosive but lost the football and has turned it over for the second time here in the third. One interception, one fumble. Longhorns have it at the 45. They have already signaled that it's Texas football. TCU still scrambling for it. It looked like Brandon Jones was all over it. That was pretty apparent. What wasn't was who knocked the football out. Talked about how nonchalant Sean Robinson is with the football. And to take a look, it looks like it was. Bimage? Yeah, Marquez Bimage pulled it out of there. Look at that. That's tough. It's, it's always the defender you don't see when you're a ball carrier. The guy behind you, the guy coming from the side. And you can you can work on ball security all you want, but it's it's extremely hard to run with all that pressure pushing into your arm and your chest to secure the football and be ready every single second as you're moving down the field. Cavante Turpin, you see right there at the end of the replay, injured. And training staff on taking a look at him. Turpin to his feet. Okay, so now you shift the conversation to Texas. Can you take advantage of this good field position? Down 16-10 late in the third. Yeah, this is typically the time they call it sudden change, right? You get a turnover, then you take a shot, you try to seize the momentum, especially when you're playing at home. We've seen him try to hit deep shots to Duvernay, who's to the bottom of the screen. They've not tried to go over the top with him yet today. Ellinger to throw. Look in the other direction. Over Humphrey and incomplete. You know, the fans want to want to flag there on Vernon Scott again. He seems to be the guy that is the guilty suspect, or allegedly. 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 Yeah. But that, that ball, I don't even know if it was necessarily catchable. Second and ten. Looks like one with the running back alignment. And it is. And you know, TCU knows that. Watson for a gain of one. Juan Johnson the tackle. And the tell is a little bit easier with Trey Watson based on how he aligns versus, you know, Ingram, who's a freshman. Um, a more experienced runner. I'm sure Watson coming from Cal, the grad transfer, was heavily recruited to get here to Texas. He's a more experienced runner. He understands why he wants to step back a little deeper so he can get his shoulders square and run more downhill. Texas one for ten on third down today. Ellinger given time. Swings it out of the backfield and Watson accelerates down the sideline getting just enough for the first down. That's the sort of play that Ellinger doesn't get enough credit for because he works through all the possible options on the outside but then he finds his running back the outlet usually fifth in the progression in that case something he's doing more and more of lately he's improved since we saw in week one versus Maryland this is the difference in this player he's starting to kind of buy into what Tom Herman and Tim Beck are preaching to him Watson you saw kind of limping off Daniel Young comes on and he takes the fake Ellinger down the scene incomplete Johnson defended by Gladney. And when you've got a guy like Colin Johnson, if you're Sam Ellinger, you don't have to be perfect. Just throw it up. And part of the frustration there is Johnson gets an inside release. Usually you want an outside release on these go routes because then the defender can't see the football as well and he can't disrupt your pass route. And usually the ball's up to a spot before Johnson could even declare if he's going inside or outside anyway. And Johnson has six inches on Gladney. Ellinger didn't give him a shot. Young with a short gain and it's third down. Ellinger told us yesterday normally with Colin Johnson he just tries to put it in his area because of that length because of his ability to go up and get it. And, and that all comes down to trust. You, know, you got to trust your wide receivers that if they don't come down with it the defense isn't either. Especially when you throw up those 50-50 balls. 
converted a third down on this drive. Here's third and seven. Only three rush. Ellinger with time. Confident throw for a first down. Second catch, L.J. Humphrey. Second, third down conversion of this Texas drive. We talked with L.J. Humphrey and Sam Ellinger, and one of the things Sam said about L.J. is he just knows the soft spots of the coverage. Just has a good feel for where to be, especially on third down. Quickly back in the ball. Ellinger back to throw. Flags down as he takes off and slides. And all kinds of penalty flags. Looks like either multiple holds. Holding by number 66 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, and it's still first down. Here, Calvin Anderson. We talked about how gassed he looked on the last drive. Hands on the hips, dealing with those speed edge rushers for TCU. The sorts of things that have kept Texas out of the end zone, or at least having a more makeable field goal throughout the course of the game. Puts it at the 32, first down and 20 here in the final minute of this third quarter. Ellinger pressured again, stands in, end zone! What a catch! Colin Johnson, tie game! Well, let's confirm that he caught the football. Six foot six needed the full extension. And yes, indeed. What a throw. What a play. And this is what they've been waiting for from this young man to have these sorts of splash plays, these sorts of momentum changes for the Texas Longhorns. Extra point from Dicker puts Texas back in front. And brings 100,000 to life here at DKR. The junior out of San Jose with a highlight reel play. What a finish we got coming from Austin. Six catches, 118 yards, and now a touchdown for Colin Johnson, who's somewhere back there. There he is. What a play. When you look at the passing game of Texas, it's basically been Humphrey and Johnson this entire year. I mean, coming into the game, they had the majority of the receptions and production in the passing game for Texas. Pins that one in the end zone, keeping it away from Turpin. Let's look back at the touchdown. It's all about play design. So watch as we're going to have Humphrey then occupy the safety, and then you've got a post route by Johnson and it's because of the inside route it occupies the safety that allows Johnson to get and gain leverage and then he just utilizes his speed and then a well thrown football by Ellinger for the touchdown. You did every bit of that six six frame to extend to get it and you got to love the presence of mind to not only get his arm underneath it but then roll his body as he comes down to the ground to ensure that it was a catch. Now Robinson throws an interception. Second of the day for Caden Stearns. He will take this one inside the five. And it's unraveling on the Horn Frogs late in the third again. Now they change the call and say touchdown. Well, this is going to be reviewed because it is now called a scoring play. I got to be honest with you. It looks like unless a foot stepped out, not right there. Because it looks like on the three yard line, you can see his left foot stepped out. So this, and that looks pretty definitive. So this should be coming back. Nonetheless, that's right here. Left foot out. And the ball was about at the three. Either way, though, what a play by the true freshman. His second interception of the day. If you're Gary Patterson, you have to kind of be beside yourself. These are the sorts of mistakes that lost you a game last week versus Ohio State in the second half. And now all of a sudden, when it, when it happens two weeks in a row, that's a trend. Yeah. Trends can be concerning. 
Yeah, remember they led Ohio State late in the third quarter before the Buckeyes ripped off 20 points in a row. You know, but Sean Robinson was resilient. He came back, threw a touchdown past the Heights, kind of kept them back in the game. Some other plays later on that created more separation for Ohio State, but I mean, that's going to be the task, especially as Texas is going to have the football knocking on the door to score another touchdown is, you know, you're not out of it. You have plenty of time left, but you have to find a way to mentally regroup. Boy, if you're going to overturn one of your, uh, going to overturn one of your fellow officials, you better be sure, huh? After further review, during the return, the runner stepped out of bounds with the ball at the two and a half yard line. So it the initial down. call was right. We look back at the interception, second of the day for Stearns. Yeah, and check out number seven, Caden Stearns. He's going to be looking at the eyes the entire time. And Sean Robinson kind of stares down the middle. He never sees Stearns. Once he passes off Artavius Lynn, he then comes back to the inside. He's literally looking at Robinson, looking for Jerison Stewart. And it's another easy interception for him. So first down and goal. He's got a run written all over it. With a hammer, Young. Ellinger pulled it. Touchdown, Texas. It just delayed the inevitable. So tough to stop. And Ellinger is so good at giving a, a read on the end and whether or not that guy fully commits. And when he sees daylight, especially down close to the goal line, he's going to keep it. He's going in. Two touchdowns in a 17 second span for the Longhorns. Caden Stearns intercepts Sean Robinson, puts it in the doorstep, and Ellinger caps it off. You know, turnovers have been part of the problem for Texas in this series, losing four games in a row to TCU, but today leading the turnover margin for nothing. Yeah, they've averaged two per game when you look at the, the past four meetings, but it hasn't been as much of an issue for them today. Devontae Turpin, always a threat. Flags down as he goes crashing his way across the 30 with no regard for that little frame. And an injured Longhorn. It looks like he was working on Trayvon Morg Woodard. Oof. And that, I mean, that is a body slam. Wow. To Marcus the Durst. Return, a personal foul by number 17 of the return team. The penalty is 15 yards in his first down. And that's what the penalty's called on. Let's check in with Greg Wolf for a game break. Joe, thanks. Number 13, Virginia Tech, in a dogfight in their first ever trip to Old Dominion. Blake LaRussa to Jonathan Duhart, 29 yard touchdown. The 0-3 Monarchs with the ball in the lead on the Hokies, 42-35, late fourth quarter. Joe Brady, back to you. Wow, I mean, that's a, that's a blow for the ACC. I mean, when you look at that conference besides Clemson, I, I don't know who you're really hanging your hat on. How does TCU respond? Anderson dumps it into the flats. And a short game, Anthony Wheeler. Stopping Jerison Stewart. His third quarter clock winding down. A week ago, TCU led 21 13 late in the third before Ohio State ripped off those three consecutive touchdowns to take command of the game. Eerily similar story late in the third here in Austin. The Horn Frogs hope for a different response. Texas trying to validate what they did last week and beat GP and TCU for the first time in five years.
Back on Fox College Football, sponsored by the all-new Totally Remix, Volkswagen Jetta, and ready for the fourth quarter. Texas looking for its first win against TCU in Austin since 2007. TCU's never won five in a row against Texas. Last time they won four in a row was back in the 1930s. Fourth quarter begins with a second and six and a Shewo Olana Lua run for a TCU first down. Slipping past an extra defender to the 35. Now, I'm not sure anyone wants to tackle him. I mean, once he gets into the second level, that is not a fun job for the Texas secondary. Robinson quickly outside to Jalen Rager. P.J. Locks all over him. Under the well one too many times on that play. It was utilized earlier in the game. I think it worked for TCU, but you got to start stretching the field vertically. This TCU secondary now is starting to sit on a lot of the shorter routes. And we did see them get burned by a couple double moves. Maybe you bring that back into the repertoire. Maybe setting it up. Alana Lua swings out, gets a block. Great open field tackle from Brandon Jones. And it's third down for the Horn Frogs. Jones is really having himself a game. Number of tackles, interception as well, a cover to fumble. It's kind of been all over the place. Third and four. Texas showed a corner blitz. Robinson getting a new call from the sideline. It looks like Texas still wants to bring it. They're not making an adjustment. They're showing it against Turpin down here. They hand it off to Alana Lua, who's got a first down. That's one of the risks that you take when you blitz. You're going to have to slant your line, which sometimes creates seams. So a lot of times people think, ah, oh, blitz, you don't want to run the football. Not necessarily. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a gash and a nice little gain for a first down. Got him outnumbered in the box, but a flag flies. That's a delay game. A false start by number 52 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Excuse me, that's on Trey Elliott. But, you know, he's going up there making adjustments. The one thing I think you notice from Sean Robinson, at least this season, is first half versus second half. He's been really good in the first half of putting up points, getting production, his decision making, but. They've got in the second half of games, he has struggled. And that's been the story of today's game so far. Three drives in the second half have ended with his turnovers, two interceptions, and a fumble. With a penalty first and 15, and the Horn showing pressure again. It's picked up, and into the vacated area goes Tay Barber. A gain of 22, beating the blitz for a first down. And that's the sort of decision making you want to see quick and decisive. He sees that there's going to blitz, there's going to be a blitz. He understands where the vacated spot is, completes the football. Darius Anderson. Tackle from behind by Anthony Wheeler just hasn't been able to get going today after his big week against the Buckeyes. Well, typically, TCU likes to throw the football more when Shea Wu Alana Lu is in at running back. When Darius Anderson then he typically gets more touches running the football. It's a tendency, but outside of that, maybe you got to think about throwing the football more when Anderson is in. Texas is playing more one high look, so we're putting that extra defender in the box to stop the run when he's in. Barber in motion. Anderson. Inside the 30. PJ Locke brings him down third and three. It's only a one score game too when you think about the eight point differential. So if you're TCU you don't need to panic. You don't need to all of a sudden have to go into some ultra fast mode and trying to pressure put more pressure on yourself. You can still run the football and do whatever you really want here. They've been good on third down after going 0 for 5 to begin 5 for their last six. Yeah, if they don't turn the football over it's not like Texas's offense would have been able to drive down the field. 
On third down, he looks short side, throwing the screen. Barber crunched short. Gerald Wilbon, it's fourth and less than a yard. Talked about that crunch. Guess what? B.J. Foster's back in the game. That guy hits as hard as any college football player I've seen in quite some time. He's a true freshman. What are you doing? Fourth down, less than a yard. I, I think you go to the quarterback running game. You got Shea on a little end to help kind of lead the way, but maybe go to the wild cow with all these different bigger bodies. That's what they're going to do. Robinson deploys to the left. Alamalua ready to take the direct snap. Five to snap it. Two to snap it. Just got it off. Alana Lua gets the first down. Oh, it's a precarious setup there with a running back ready to take and the play clock winding down. Well, that's the toughest part. You got a running back out there trying to communicate. He's got to pull the mouth guard out and make sure he gets everything settled up front. But the other thing is it takes away your, your ability to throw the football. Sean Robinson is a good running quarterback. There's, there's no reason why you can't put him back there and run a very similar play. So the Horn Frogs convert first down at the Texas 25. Robinson dumps it off. Anderson steps out of a tackle. And he gets inside the 25. Devontae Davis swoops in to get him. Jalen Rager's been awfully quiet since that touchdown catch we saw before half. You wonder when they want to try to get him started again. He's isolated right now at the top of the screen all by himself. Texas bringing pressure. Robinson floating it up there. Rager can't get it. Draped by Boyd. That's exactly what we talked about. They, they continue to keep using the slogan or the slant and go. And this time, Chris Boyd wasn't fooled. See? A little more cushion. He's like, I've seen this before. Not a very good football either. But that's the risk that you take now. Incompletion there. And now you're in third and long. And you got to ask yourself, is this four down territory? Depending on how you feel about the kicking game with the wind down on the field as well. Third and nine. Look at all the pressure. All those guys up around the line of scrimmage. Texas, Texas calls their uses first a timeout. Time we'll take it with them. 9.24 left to go. Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Domino's. Order online and track your order. And by State Farm here to help life go right. Back at Austin, 89th meeting between TCU and Texas. Horn Frogs have won four in a row in the series. Five of the six is Big 12 foes. In the Big 12 opener, Texas trying to put an end to that streak. Behind 95,000 strong, trying to stop Sean Robinson and TCU on third and nine. Texas bringing it picked up Robinson throws and it's broken up by Davis what a break on the ball on a pass intended for Barber fourth down well, this is just a heck of a play by an upperclassman the senior out of Miami Florida watch number 18 see how he has his eyes on the inside they call this squeezing the slot so even though he's really responsible for that third of the field he feels that seam route he's got his eyes on it and he's able to get into this disrupt the pass and if you're TC, you're thinking, man, could have had Cavante Turpin to the outside. He was sitting there all by himself. You had asked if maybe it was four down territory, but at fourth and nine, they bring Song on for a 41 yarder. And he misses wide to the right. On the 12th attempt of Jonathan Song's career, his first miss. And Texas stays in front by eight.
Well, the doctor's game summary shows TCU outgaining Texas, but the story, the takeaways, Texas has four of them. And the biggest thing has been TCU, really, with the first couple turnovers, their defense responded, had their back. Last two hasn't been the case. So that's been kind of set up by the return on the turnover, though. 9 16 left to play. That's what this TCU program is built on. It's defense. Have to lean out of here, trying to get the ball back, and a good start to it. As Corey Bethley drops Trey Watson for a loss. And when you go back and look at the decision to kick versus had they happen to go for him fourth down, it, it wasn't going to make a difference because if they didn't get the fourth down, and it was a turnover on downs, they still needed a touchdown. And even with the, even if they would have made the field goal, they still need a touchdown. So you know, in this case, you know, Gary could have made a wrong decision there. He just wished you would have been able to convert. Empty it out for Ellinger on second and 12. Humphrey stays in bounds. Markel Simmons with a tackle as Humphrey gets five, and it's third down for Texas with eight and a half left. You go back to last week, really the last two weeks, even this third down area typically passing down. But this is where Ellinger and his feet and his legs, when he sees that opening, starts to come into play. He'll drop back, but he will take off. Accomplishes two things. Maybe they get the first down, but it at least ensures that the clock keeps running. TCU shows pressure. It's like Ellinger sees it on third and seven. Here they come. Ellinger throws in the other direction for Johnson, who fights his way for the Texas first down. What a day for Colin Johnson. It's just an under route, but the separation is at the top, and then really glad he not getting down the bigger Colin Johnson. And so far, that matchup today between Jeff Gladney, one of the better cornerbacks in the Big 12, and Colin Johnson has gone the way of the Longhorn. Well, we've seen the sparkle with the diving touchdown catch, and now we see some physicality from the big fella. Career high seven receptions. Fresh set of downs from the 34. Watson spun off initial contact and got five. Waddle had him teed up in the backfield but couldn't bring him down. Second missed tackle in as many plays. The 30. The Wallow. I mean, he just sees it and they, they call firing your gun. He does not hesitate. It's one of the reasons why I feel like you look at the TCU defense and they haven't seen as much of a drop off as I thought they might see with Howard moving on to the NFL. But you can't say enough about the job that. Gary Patterson is done continuing to replace guys that's coming to do their job. Quickly outside. Duvernay. More broken tackles. And another Texas first down. Look at all the cushion. That's why Ellen Gross working these matchups to the outside. It's almost like an extension of the running game. And you got Duvernay and the ball in his hands. He, he runs strong. He's almost like a running back with it on the outside. Watson off the left side. And close to another first down. Vernon Scott tackled him. And what's uncharacteristic right now of the TCU defense is one, missed tackles, but two in the last play, you know, not setting an edge. Typically they don't let teams get to the outside. Derek Kirkstetter pulled around to the edge, was able to seal it off. Gary Patterson, you have to force the issue. You're going to have to start blitzing, doing some other things to create some disruption. Second and short. Daniel Young, first down. This is the kind of drive that is an offensive lineman you've got to love. Up eight, five and a half to go. That's how they finished off Tulsa. I mean, this is exactly what you'd want to see. Talk with head coach Tom Herman. He said, these are the types of drives that we've got to continue to improve on in finishing the game. They got the ball, nine minutes, maybe 12 seconds left. So far, 
they're working on a, a four minute long drive and you know they've got first and ten and they're working in the plus territory. From the 41 yard line with an eight point lead inside the five minute mark. Watson gets crunched. Alec Dunham. That was the theme. The whole offseason was finish. Preaching the fourth quarter. That's why it was such a huge disappointment when they lost it in the fourth quarter against Maryland after that long delay. And why it was so gratifying when they finished off Tulsa, like you're mentioning. Looking for another notch in that regard here. But but the difference was the fact that they weren't in the position where they had to come back. You yeah. go back to last year and some of the games that they ended up losing, whether it was USC, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, where they were up in the fourth quarter and gave up the lead. Here, you know, it's been a different story this year, I think. They've started to realize running the football, taking care of the clock, shorting the game has been the better way to go for them. Tenth play of the drive. Watson gets pummeled again. Jawan Johnson. Senior transfer out of Northern Illinois. And it's third and seven. Listen to this one, Brady. <laughs> Get a little help from Alec Dunn and the defeat wrapped up of Trey Watson. He really didn't have anywhere to go. He was a sitting duck for Johnson. Well, the best the Horn Frogs have done on this drive on first and second down. So it's third and seven. Ellinger scans, steps up, steps back, heaves one for Humphrey. L.J. Humphrey, Texas touchdown. He was quiet for the majority of the game, but once we got into the second half, little Jordan Humphrey continued to work, continued to find space, and watch the matchup here. Number 26, Vernon Scott. He plays to the inside, but look how long he's got to cover Humphrey. And eventually, Sam Unger finds his favorite target for a touchdown. Such good chemistry, those two. Such great feel from LJ Humphrey. Developed that chemistry over the offseason and in the spring and into fall camp, and it pays off here for a long touchdown and 21 unanswered for the Longhorns. Now a game that TCU once led 16 10 is now 31 16 Texas as LJ Humphrey from 38 yards caps off a 10 play 76 yard drive that runs almost six minutes off the clock. This has really been kind of almost a, a complete game for Texas. When you look at last week versus USC, started off slow, but then really cleaned things up in the second half. Today, it was a little bit of back and forth in the beginning, but they, they still kept their foot on the gas pedal here in the second half to make it a two-score game now. Done a nice job of keeping it off, or keeping it out of Turpin's hands much of the day, but he'll get an opportunity here. Devontae Turpin. Takes it across the 30. We'll take a break. Final minutes. Does TCU have some magic? They're going to need it. Down two touchdowns late. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen. Sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 21 unanswered for the Longhorns. Similar story to last week in the win against USC when they scored the final 34 points. And as big as that one was for Tom Herman and the Texas Longhorn program, this one's a whole nother set of circumstances considering that it's a team that's beaten them four consecutive years and it's the Big 12 opener. Not done yet. 312 left to go. Robinson facing pressure looking for the knockout blow right away with that Texas defense misfires for Rager. He was pressured by Wheeler and slow getting up. Ag aggressive play calling yeah. by defensive coordinator Todd Orlando. You'd think maybe all right we're up by a couple scores. Maybe we'll play some prevent defense three man rush. No we're going to go ahead and just bring a Sam Will blitz off each edge see if we can put a few more hits on Sean Robinson. Yeah that was not prevent. 
Got to love it. He's supposed to get that football back to his offense and run the clock out. Robinson goes out after that big hit. Michael Collins, sophomore transfer from Penn, comes in and quickly throws it outside. It's dropped by Rager. They said that it was a backwards pass. I look forward from up here. I agree. And important with the clock continuing to run. Huh. And they lose yardage because of it. Officials are coming together now. Let's take another look. I mean, it, that's not even in question. I mean, he throws the football from what, the, the 26? Yeah, two or three yards forward. And he catches it near the 30. And again, the significance is something you point out. The clock keeps running. And obviously, they're going to get a few more yards. They should make it closer to third and, what, 10? The running on the field is an incomplete pass. Please reset the game clock to 248. 248. Okay. Good, they're able to do that without a review. Add some time on there. It'll be third and exactly 10. So Todd Orlando heats it up again, forcing to get the ball out of his hand quick. The previous play is under further review. And this is for the clock. Four seconds. I don't, I don't know if that was quite enough. I tended to agree with you, and I think Gary Patterson is probably on that page too, and in their ear about it. So they will take a look. Two things you're fighting right now if you're TCU: time and distance. So obviously every second is precious. And obviously every yard too. Talked about the decision for your Todd Orlando here in your Texas. You know you, you could try to pressure and force the football out. Something Three zero short. five. Wow. Good thing they checked. Seventeen more seconds. Um, but you know you could pressure the football to come out, force TCU to throw it short, and then come up make a tackle. You know, or you play back. You drop eight and see if you can just get in all the passing lanes. So that's about right. Three hundred five, three hundred four. Yeah. Know, this hole's blown. A lot closer than two forty four, which is where it was sitting before <laughs> the forty eight. And it's Michael Collins back in. After the big hit on the first play of this drive. Collins three for six over the first few weeks at TCU. Texas showing pressure again. On third down, Collins steps up. He will run. And as he's sliding, gets hit by Johnson. Fourth down and four. And obviously a must go here. You gotta have it. And if you're Michael Collins, you're doing everything you can to give yourself a chance to get the conversion here. Even if that means throwing in the traffic, taking a shot. Garrett Patterson will use his first time out. Back in 30 seconds. Fourth down and four, and TCU is going to try to do it without Sean Robinson. It'll continue to be Michael Collins, who's been in there the last three plays after Robinson took the big hit. A new quarterback in. If I'm Todd Orlando, I'm heating him up. Again? Oh, yeah. Do it. Oh. Oh. I'm not going to go for it. They're going to punt? This is a bit surprising, especially considering you only got two timeouts left, and you're down by two scores. You'd think you'd... Be a little bit more in desperation mode if you want to have a shot to stay back in this. I understand in a one touchdown game, but yeah. it seems crazy in a two touchdown game. It's almost like punt works figuratively in this case, too. They're punting the game. Two timeouts, 236 to go, down two touchdowns. One. And they give it back to Texas. And then based on how, you know, the last series went with Texas just methodically working it down the field, I don't know how you have much confidence in your, your defense right now. Take a look, Brady, at our hardest working players, sponsored by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear, designed and tested by tradesmen. Sam Ellinger's best game. Yeah, best game so far, and the biggest key, no turnovers. And, you know, there's a stat now, 10-plus rushes. They, they win every every game. That's whenever you rush the football ten plus times. 
at least this season. Daniel Young, the short gain on first down, stopped by Vernon Scott. That's the biggest key, though, for Sam Ellinger is, as they move forward throughout their Big 12 schedule. You know, he's got to continue to grow. He's a true sophomore. You know, I think you're going to start to see some of his best football as we head on into the second half of the season. Tom Herman said it was the hardest decision he's ever had to make as a head coach or coordinator, choosing Sam Ellinger over Shane Bouchelle coming out of fall camp, but ultimately the intangibles. For Sam Ellinger, things that are hard to measure, hard to put a value on what he does just through statistics. Young again. And it'll be third down. And Gary Patterson is up oh, now going to call a timeout. Take a look at the road ahead, sponsored by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. A gauntlet for Tom Herman's team, but they're going to go into it. Looks like three and one. Well, look, in Manhattan, Kansas, tough place to go versus Kansas State. I know they took a big loss versus West Virginia today, but then you've got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. I mean, all opponents um, that, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to match up with defensively and high-scoring games. You know, even Baylor's beating Kansas pretty darn good right now. thought the Jayhawks were back. Not quite. Not yet. Two in a row, though. That's something to kind of hang your hat on. It's progress for them. Well, you kind of tongue in cheek said to start the game, is Texas back? After they beat USC, nobody was ready to say it yet. Are you ready to say Texas is back after they beat TCU here in the conference opener? I feel like I got to be careful because every time we've heard someone say that, then all of a sudden things haven't worked out down the road. So for the sake of Longhorn fans, I'm going to pull back a little bit in, in hopes that you know it will work out the rest of this season for them because I do think this team's got a ton of talent and ability LJ Humphrey with a Wildcat but there's there's no reason this team couldn't win the Big 12 championship I mean really the way the, with the pieces they have on both sides of the ball final timeout use back in 30 seconds now well, the Horn Frogs are going to get the ball back here but down two touchdowns after Gary Patterson elects to punt it on a fourth down and four in the previous possession. And the question will be was it to maybe give Sean Robinson more of a breather? Um, it looked like he was going to come back out for that play, and after the timeout, it was Michael Collins. Kuchewski waited a moment. Good punt. Turpin with a fair catch all the way back at the 20. For the second week in a row, the game turns on TCU in the third quarter. They led Ohio State late in the third last week. Before it unraveled with 20 consecutive points for the Buckeyes in a four-minute span. And the turnovers opened the door for Texas to step right through it this afternoon. Third quarter's been a good quarter for Texas. Um, they've outscored their opponents. They've seemed to get off to a pretty good start at a halftime, at least since their second game of the season versus Tulsa onward. And, and the biggest thing was capitalizing off the mistakes. I think that's the next step this Texas team has to be able to take is when teams turn over the football, you got to convert those into points. They didn't with the first two. They did it with the second two. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm high on this Texas team. I think they've, they're continuing to grow and progress on each side of the football and how they play together. And there are no timeouts left for the Horn Frogs. With a minute 27, pressure coming off of the edge. Collins steps up and throws incomplete. And trust me, this is a tough position to be in if you're Michael Collins. You know, you probably got few reps, if any, during the week. You're in a very predictable circumstance. Texas knows you got to throw it. They're either rushing or they're dropping a bunch of guys in coverage. It's tough duty being in that spot. They just got to take a shot. Might as well, right? Why not? Go big, go home. <laughs> Collins throws it off of the hands of De Devontae Davis and third and ten. Such a good player in zone coverage. You know, typically that's when those interceptions come because you can have your eyes on the quarterback in the football and affect the passing lanes. The interesting thing is though Jalen Rager's been really quiet and I kind of feel like after the touchdown before half to him. Never really got him back involved in the game, and that's something that TCU's got to work on moving forward, getting those playmakers involved consistently. Collins throws on the move, and he's got a first down with a minute 11 to go, and it is Rager. 
These are good reps for the sophomore too. You know, this, this is a learning experience for him. Something more to happen to Sean Robinson. Second and ten, thrown to the feet of Turpin. You look at the reasons why TCU was successful versus Texas in the previous four games. It's the exact opposite so far. You know, they took care of the football, they stopped the run, they stopped a lot of the things that Texas was able to accomplish here today. Bringing pressure. Collins finds an open man, Jerison Stewart in the Longhorn territory. Clock will stop with the first down. I can stop. Look out. Got rid of it just in time. And Alana Lua gets a few yards. You know, that's where you're almost better off just throwing an incompletion. You know, get, get the clock to stop. And that way, you know, you're not really sacrificing precious time for five yards. Kill the clock here. Yeah, interesting, though, the clock kept running. Never stopped for to reset the chains after the first down. Usually it's supposed to. But... Is the moral of the story here? Whatever school has Chris Del Conte wins. That is something no one's brought up. I think you're on to something. Athletic director at TCU the previous He's eight seasons came over to Texas. There, huh? Yeah. Third and six. Collins moving his feet. Floating one downfield. That is going to be pass interference. Stravante Heights got hit by Jones and Davis. It looked like incidental contact, like their, their legs had gotten tied up. Let's take another look at it, though, as the officials try to sort it out. Everyone's looking back for the football. and There is no foul for yeah, defensive pass interference. There you go. It's fourth down. Sometimes in the NFL level, you get those old savvy vets. They figure out how to kind of do that without getting the call. But this level, I don't think there's any malicious intent there. <laughs> Fourth down and six. Texas bringing pressure again. Collins. Heights was wide open, but. Collins got hit as he threw it and didn't have enough on it. That's going to do it. And what a win for Texas. Really making a statement. USC was one thing on the national stage. I think they've proven to be able to do that in the past. In fact, they did it back in 2016 versus Notre Dame. But to do it versus a team that's been able to dominate them the past four years, in my opinion, is truly a statement. And getting back-to-back -back wins like this versus quality opponents, two top 25 ranked teams. But it's not been close at all during that four game losing streak for the Longhorns average score of 38 to 8 granted only one of those years was Tom Herman. But that was a story that he inherited coming over from Houston last year. Here in his second season he's got the Longhorns at three and one with back to back wins over big time opponents USC and then TCU in front of incredible atmospheres here at DKR. And the scary thing is, I think, as this team continues to gain confidence, they're only going to get better. They're only going to get more consistent. The 12 better watch out. This Texas team is about ready to be something special. Bruce is on the field with Tom Herman. Tom, this is the second week in a row you dominated a really good team in the second half. What does it say about this Texas Longhorns? Well, we're different. Uh, we're learning how to finish each week. Uh, we, we took a big step last week, took another one this week, but we're, we're far from a finished product. We got to come out in the first half. We got to do better on third down, but uh, really proud of our guys in the second half. This is the first time you guys have won three in a row since 2014. How do you manage the expectations and the hype that is now coming your way? Uh, the same way we did this past week. We, we had a team meeting on Sunday. We said the only people whose opinion matter are those in the team meeting room our players and our coaches and that's the way we got to live the rest of this season. What's changed about this group with Sam taking over and just about the 
you guys are getting turnovers. It seems like you've grown up a lot since the last time we saw you at Maryland. Uh, belief. We never wavered. We, we stayed positive. We understood that that first week wasn't us, that we were going to grow. Uh, and we continue to do that. We coached really hard. The players responded to that coaching and uh, couldn't be prouder. Thanks, son. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Herman. Thank you, Bruce. 31-16, the final score. The Texas Longhorns move to 3-1 and one on the season, while TCU suffers a second consecutive loss. Maybe the best game Sam Ellinger has played as a Longhorn. He and Texas able to finish it off. For Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman, the rest of our crew, Joe Davis saying so long from Austin. We'll get you to Los Angeles for more college football coverage right after these messages.